30 years ago, Benjamin Netanyahu became Israel's youngest prime minister and leader of the far-right Likud party. One of his first acts as PM was to open a tunnel exit under al Mosque compound. The move infringed on the Muslim quarter of the complex and reneged on previous agreements regarding the rights of Palestinians. Netanyahu had campaigned on stopping the peace process and this move made it clear that he was serious about delivering on that. It also began a trend that has seen Israel's government and society increase increasingly move towards openly disrespecting and ignoring the rights of Palestinians. On the 25th of September 1996, the then mayor of Jerusalem, Ehud Olmut, surrounded by television cameras, announced a new opening to the Western Wall Tunnel in the Muslim quarter of Jerusalem. The sprawling 1,000 foot underground passage followed the base of the renowned Western Wall, which borders one of the holiest sites in the Islamic world, Al-Aqsa Mosque. Olmut, who would later serve as Israel's prime minister, told spectators that the new opening established a new feat for Israeli tourism and cemented the Jewish claim to the city to Palestinians who questioned it. Within hours, news of the tunnel spread and hundreds of Palestinians took to the streets to Jerusalem to protest. They were met with Israeli police firing rubber bullets in an attempt to prevent protesters from reaching the entrance of the tunnel. The Western Wall Tunnel riots lasted for four days. The clashes were primarily between Israeli forces and the newly established Palestinian National Security Forces, NSF, which had been created by the 1993 Oslo Accords as the armed forces for the Palestinian Authority. The riots spread from Jerusalem to cities and towns across the West Bank and Gaza, leaving 70 Palestinians and 16 Israelis dead. The opening of the exit in the Muslim quarter to the excavated tunnel complex was ordered by Benjamin Netanyahu. A series of Israeli prime ministers before Netanyahu had refused to build an exit, wary of damaging relations with Palestinians. But the 46-year-old conservative politician had won his first time in 1996 by campaigning to stop the peace process and guarantee that all of Jerusalem would stay under Israeli control. This is a crime, a big crime against our religious and holy places. And it is completely against the peace process. Even after he was criticized over the tunnel exit, Netanyahu remained adamant over his decision, instead blaming the PA for the violence. US President Bill Clinton called for calm and called for Netanyahu to temporarily close the tunnel exit. Netanyahu refused. He referred to the tunnel as the bedrock of our Jewish existence. Netanyahu's first stint in office came to an end in 1999, when he was replaced as prime minister by the more liberal Ehud Barak. But by 2000, Israeli-Palestinian peace talks, especially over the Western Wall Tunnel, were in disarray. It was at this point that a watershed moment occurred. While campaigning for the 2001 prime ministerial elections, the new leader of the Likud party, Errol Sharon, made a highly controversial visit to Al-Aqsa Mosque and triggered the Second Intifada, all Palestinian uprising. This lasted for five years, igniting skirmishes between Palestinians and Israeli forces that left more than 3,000 Palestinians and 1,000 Israelis dead. It also led to the defeat of Barak, and helped catapult into power the right-wing Errol Sharon, who was seen as stamping Israel's mark on Al-Aqsa after years of failed peace negotiations. In recent years, Israeli settler incursions under the protection of Israeli authorities have increased at Al-Aqsa, with tours organized five days a week. Settlers had previously refrained from entering Al-Aqsa during Muslim holidays, but that too has changed. The incursions trigger confrontations with Palestinians, which often lead to violent Israeli crackdowns. Tensions tend to escalate during Ramadan, when Israeli authorities place restrictions on Palestinian worshippers who want to pray at the sites, or when members of the Knesset tour the area. In April 2023, Israeli police attacked worshippers during the holy month in the Qibli Mosque. On the 6th of May 2021, violent raids by Israeli police on Al-Aqsa Mosque during Ramadan Malan ignited a war on Gaza. The 11-day war killed 253 Palestinians, including 66 children. The increased raids are directly supporting facilities
facilitated by Israel's far-right government. In November 2022, Israel elected its most far-right government to date. Netanyahu by now was serving his sixth term as PM, and to hold on to power, he forged a coalition between his Likud party and religious Zionism. This included the ultra-nationalist Otzma Yehudit party, Jewish Power, which is led by far-right politician Itamar ben -Gavir, a leader so extreme he was once banned from entering elections. ben -Gavir has long admired extremist rabbi Mir Kahana and until recently had a portrait of the terrorist Baruch Goldstein in his home, an American Israeli who killed 29 Palestinian worshippers in Hebron in 1994. Netanyahu has long prided himself on his Mr. Security credentials, but he lost the last of his credibility among his supporters after Hamas's attack on Israel on October 7, which killed 1,200 people, and the subsequent Israeli war on Gaza, which has killed at least 31,000 Palestinians. He has been in charge of Israel for almost 15 of the past 28 years, since 1996. He started his reign in a period where the peace process was still possible, but three months into his first term, he appeased ultra-right-wing Zionists by undermining the peace process, Palestinian rights, and the agreements that govern Muslim Judeo relations around the holy sanctity in Jerusalem. And most importantly, he undermined the rights of the Palestinians to have their own state. As the years have gone by, that trend has only increased, and security for Israel and the liberation for Palestinians have only become more elusive.